In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. He is risen, alleluia. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Alleluia. among the dead. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives. And at the last, He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Epistles from 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and and truth. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb. For trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. I love that one, don't you? Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Did you know it's not just us singing today? All creation. Everybody say all creation. All creation is singing the resurrection victory song of our Lord. From the beginning, right here, Mark chapter 16, we hear of it. Creation singing. Because friends, when the women came to put to anoint Jesus, we're told it was very early on the first day of the week, And the sun had risen. Did you catch it? It's kind of early. Say it again. The sun had risen. These people got it. One more time. The sun had risen. Are we just talking about that big gas ball in the sky? I wonder if King David knew what he was saying in Psalm 19 when he says that the sun comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, the tomb. And like a strong man runs its course, his course with joy. Creation singing. And not just the sun. There's an angel there. And the angel says to the women, you seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He's risen. You got to commit to it, man. (laughs) I wasn't intending it, but go for it. He's risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That's the song of the angels right here. He says, he's not here. Take a look. And now go tell his disciples, go tell the Peter that he is alive and he's gone on ahead of you. He's in Galilee just as he said. Beloved, all of creation is singing. It just kind of takes us a little while, us people. The women are singing a different tune. What I mean by that is what they have to say is self-referential. What they have to say is based on how they see things, how they understand things, their perspective, their vantage point. And what they see is death. What they see is is grief. What they see is loss. What they see is that we've got a problem. Who's going to roll the stone away for us? And they're not being bad. They're just bound. There's just no real music in it. Self-referential, self-starting way of seeing things. It's kind of a limited song. I'll try it like this, and you guys just play along. Let's have choir practice. Uh, you repeat after me. Do, Do re, re, mi, mi, mi. 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 Me, 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 me. 
kind of the limited song, isn't it? Me, me. But sometimes, that's maybe what we've been saying all week long. Me, me. When are people going to notice me? What are people thinking about me? Get on any social media platform and you can hear us <laughs> all about me, 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 me. Me, look at me, I just changed the key, but it's still all about me. Mike, I don't think that's going to be a hit. What do you think? (laughs) It's so narrow when we start with ourselves. It's a narrow tune. It's slavery is what it is. Slavery to fear. The Bible says, Hebrews, that when death reigned, We lived in fear. And here's the cycle. When death reigns, we start thinking, okay, what am I going to do? It's it's, we're in survival mode. We're thinking about me as if we needed any help thinking about me. And there's no life in that. There's no joy in that. It is a dead end. In fact, read your history book, and when death reigns and people are in survival mode, it really does always end in somebody's got to die, either figuratively or literally. That's life in the world where death reigns. And that's why when the women see the angel, they're alarmed. You and I know there's no reason for them to be alarmed. It doesn't make sense to us, but what they don't know. They know death. They know the one that they've loved was crucified, mercilessly killed. These women know a world where death reigns where there's war, where there's violence, where there's ghettos, where there is bigotry and racism and sexism. All the same me, me of death. There's nowhere to go. But then this angel, this angel gives the women, and today you and me, a new song to sing. A song of resurrection. The angel gives a message that reveals that death is not the end. We live in a world where somebody who was really dead really rises physically from the grave, never to die again. The angel gives us a song where Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came for us and He came to destroy death. And He came to destroy the one who had the power over death, that is, the devil. And He came to us who were enslaved, and he set us free. And he's making all things new. And he's put a new song in our mouth. That's the message. Do you begin to see what Jesus is doing? I heard about something that Wynton Marcellus did. Wynton Marcellus is a renowned trumpet player.
player, virtuoso, plays all kinds of music. He's known for jazz. And a newspaper author was at one of his concerts. He played this little club in New York City. And uh, he was, the, uh, the rest of his band took a break and Wynton Marcellus came to the front of the stage and he played this song, I Don't Stand a Ghost of a Chance with You. Do you know this one? I don't stand a ghost of a chance with you. Something like that. It was magic. He took this song and he, he created something marvelous. And he rhapsodized the people. And as the song started to wind down, the mood got really taut. Everyone was hanging on every note. As he brought it to an end, I don't stand a ghost of a chance. And then somebody's cell phone went off. And it's one of those sort of annoying little cell phone jingles. Some absurd (laughs) little tune. And suddenly, the crowd is tittering. Guy gets up, takes a cell phone, and and runs out to take the the call. The the writer, this newspaper person, uh, wrote down on his pad, Magic Ruined. But then, Marcellus played that cell phone melody note for note. He played it again and gave it some different accents. He continued to play it, and he would change keys several times. And suddenly, he was... Spinning a rhapsody out of this silly little tune, those gathered sort of settled back into their seats and they realized that they were watching something extraordinary. As Wynton Marcellus took this song and he wove glory out of goofiness, finally, He brings the song to an end. He concludes it by playing the last two notes. He weaves it together so that he can seamlessly bring in the last two notes of the first song. With you. That's a good story. Can I tell you a better story? Let me tell you the story of our God. Let me tell you the story of the God who created all things, and he created it with mystery and wonder and beauty. I mean, it's magical what God created. Such purpose, such depth that you can never get to the bottom of. And he did it all in love. But our old evil foe, the devil, wanted to bring it all to an end. And so he taught Adam and Eve and you and me that song, Me... And so sin, death. But God, but God who is rich in wisdom, but God who is marvelously merciful, but God who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, sent His own Son. And His Son, took your sin and my sin and Adam's sin 
and Eve's sin and the sin of the whole world, he took that ugly sound of death and he brought it to himself and he said, you're going to work for me. He took these things, this cacophony, and he made it bow to his good will. So that in the mystery of his crucifixion and the victory of the resurrection, he took this mess and he gave us music. And better music than we had before. He gave us hope. He gave us hope in any despair. He gave us a life so that we don't have to fear anymore. He gave us love. He gave us a sanctified imagination. He's given us peace and joy. It's beautiful. Do you begin to see and to hear what Jesus is doing right now here on the earth. Sometimes it's tough to hear, isn't it? When the women heard the message that Jesus was raised from the dead, they were told, go and tell his disciples. And we read that they went and they told nothing to anyone because they were afraid. And that's where the text ended for us. Scholars say that's actually where the book of Mark ends. A little bit of debate, but mostly scholars understand that that verse, that the women left and were afraid and didn't say anything, that that's where the story ends. In other words, the women have this message of resurrection and they have what they know and what they see, the song that they've been singing. What are they going to do? Beloved, today, you're given the same resurrection message. And that unresolved question is our question too. Can we trust that God can make something holy and beautiful and good out of a world that includes Ukraine, Israel, the cancer ward, abject poverty? Can we trust that God can make something holy and beautiful and good out of our lives? What if Jesus' resurrection is just the exception? Maybe we think. That's the perspective of our song. But what if? What if the wars and the disease, what if that's not the starting point? What if that's not what's real? And what if it's not true that Jesus' resurrection is the exception? What if? I promise I'm almost done, but come here. What if? God of all creation, the God of life and love and resurrection, what if he's real? And what if the story of resurrection is what's actually true? And the cancer and the wars are all the exception. What if we start with what God is doing? If that's the case, friends, then there's only one thing left for us to do. 
Sing with all the people of God. Come on. And join in the hymn of all creation. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for our risen and glorious Lord, whose sacrificial death has given us forgiveness of sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For holy joy throughout the Easter season in our daily lives, that we would not fear our enemies nor give into the temptation of despair in our days of trouble, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the enemies of the gospel may be hindered and that the blessed Easter message of hope may be proclaimed to all people in every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our president, and all who make and administer our laws, that God would frustrate the forces of evil and not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. And for our armed forces, as they stand watch for us at home and abroad, that they would serve with honor and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the sick and those in any need, remembering especially Maxine, Shannon, Glenn, Vicki, June, Kara, John, Dee, Jenny, Gail, Keith, and Dwayne that the dawning lights of the new creation in Christ would sustain them in faith and that according to God's will, they would be granted renewed health as a foretaste of the, their eternal healing in Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For joy in Christ's great victory feast as He shares it with us from this altar, and that He would overcome our sin by His forgiveness and swallow up our death in His life through the eating and drinking of His true body and blood in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful, that at the resurrection of all flesh, we might awaken in joy to the Lord's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels and festal gathering, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Sons of Israel. 
rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me. I shall not die, I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. This is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our minds. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross, gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus. We beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. 
Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you, both body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Please stand. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, You have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of Your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of His coming, we may together with all Your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Peace.